Yeah. You got a big fight coming up. I mean, uh, I want to ask literally, you literally, uh, literally a big guy. What, did, what? I mean, when you got this matchup, what did you? Because I mean, he, he was. I, I don't want to talk bad about you, but he might have even been disappointed, right? I mean, he was talking like championship and number one contenders and, and all that. So when this fight came about, what, what did you think about the matchup? Yeah, I mean, I knew he was going to be bummed out because I've known about this fight was in the works before anything was obviously announced, and uh, I know he didn't want it. He wanted something higher. You know, not that he didn't want to fight me, but he didn't want to fight somebody lower ranked than him. But, man, that, that's, that's the problem with me. The sport in our division right now, we got somebody's got to fight somebody lower than them. I mean, or otherwise, nobody's going to be fighting because if we all fight up, well, it doesn't work like that. Nobody's the same rank. Um, so yeah, I mean, he he's always saying people were dodging him and all this kind of stuff, and that's why me and him went back and forth with a couple little posts. It's all in good fun, man. I'm not. I have nothing personal necessarily against against James, but I'm definitely not the kind of guy that's dodging. Fight and, uh, that's the first name Sean said to us, and we said, "Yeah, that's, uh, that's who we're gonna fight." Then you mentioned the height, so obviously that stands out to you. I mean, do you think that is what? I mean, because he's had a, a lot of success in the UFC. I mean, yeah. do you think that is the key? Is that range, that height that he has, or are there other things he does that, that you're impressed with? No, yeah, I, I think he's got really good submissions, especially you know his darts and guillotine. He's got long arms, and he knows how to use them in the in the grappling department. But a lot of guys shoot on him and try to take him down. Um, which opens you up when you fight tall guys or even just long guys that are good at subs like that. You, you can't shoot sloppy. You've got to be perfect on your shot or they're going to wrap your neck up and choke you out. Um, luckily, that's not, I mean, I don't think it's given away in a game plan that people probably don't think I'm going to be shooting sloppy double legs. Unless my, I'm my like, strike. yeah, unless I'm rock. <laughs> But, uh, I, you know, he's got a good up, uppercut. Uh, he uses his length. He's been throwing a lot of wacky kicks and things like that, which I hope he does. I hope he tries to kick and, and play the range game, and I think that puts him right in my wheelhouse. Nice. So here's what I want to know. I mean, this is a, this is a tough guy, no question about it. Yeah. Here we are, just beautiful sponsor event here. You know, you've got commentary gigs lined up. I mean, you've got all this stuff outside of the sport that's lining up for you, you know? Yeah. How do you keep the motivation to keep wanting to go in there? I mean. Fighting has got to be the hardest thing on earth to do, and, and you've got all these things outside of it that can help you make some money, help, help you not have to do that. How do you make sure that you're at 100%, that you're motivated, and, and, and why do you want to keep doing that at, at the highest level when you've got these other things going on? Because right now, first and foremost, I still think of myself, I, I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter that happens to have gotten a chance to do some commentary work, and that's how I'm treating it right now. And, and, Zach Candido and all those guys, they know that. They know that I'm making my run right now, that I want to make a shot towards the top five and, and the belt. And then when I'm a little older and I'm banged up too much and I don't want my daughter to see me coming home beat up anymore, then I'll focus on being a full-time analyst and try to get back on the acting scene and all that stuff. But right now, I'm too damn close to what I've dreamt of and, and set out to do to be like, oh, well, I got some color commentary work, now I can do that. And I can make more money fighting, too, while I can. So I'm going to try to make as much money doing this, get as high as I can, get my star power as big as I possibly can before I give it all up, because that's only going to ever help all the post-fighting career stuff. So, yeah, I, and I, I'm still scrappy as hell. I'm still itching to fight, man. I love fighting, and um, I'm doing that first and foremost. And then when, you know... When I'm taking too many shots to the face, then uh, then we'll do commentary. Definitely not trying to rush you out. I mean, you're obviously in your prime, but yeah, of hey, course. who but wouldn't want to get punched in the face? Yeah, they're like, oh, man, you can do this instead. I'm like, I could have also got a desk job somewhere or, you know, get went and worked for SEPTA, the public transportation department in Philly. I could have done that too, but I didn't. I chose to get punched in the face and kicked for next to nothing for years so that I could be where I'm at right now, so I'm not giving it up anytime soon. Nice. The last thing for me, give me an idea where you think this puts you. Knowing that you are making that run, I mean, you're trying to get to the very top. James Vick, a very, very dangerous fighter, incredible record in the UFC, but he said it. Maybe he doesn't get the respect that he deserves, maybe he doesn't have the ranking that he deserves. So, so what do you think? I mean, if you go out there and beat him, do you think the UFC brass knows enough, like, how great of a win that is? It'll elevate yeah. you because the, because the public might not, right? Yeah, the public might not. I think people, you know, most of the fans are starting to, they, they know who James is. They know that, you just look at his record, I mean, he's got one loss in the uh, in the UFC, and it's to uh, Benil Dariush, but that's exactly what I'm trying to do. The last time he faced another opponent that was ranked and on his level, you know, he, he 
got knocked out. And that's what we're trying to repeat. We're trying to keep the pressure on him and, and put him out. And I think if I can put out a guy like James Vick on the tear that he's on, I think I take his spot in the rankings right away. I think I go right from number 14 to number 11, and he gets bumped down. Um, yeah, I know he thinks, you know, he wants to make a run for the title himself, too, and we're going to find out who's moving on uh, July 14th. When he pulled off that move and he sort of calls you out right then, is that the kind of move that a younger you would have done if you were in the same situation? Oh, you're talking about um, Hooker? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, when Hooker did it. Yeah, um, yeah I, I kind of, we kind of knew that was coming just because when we um, interviewed him before the fight, my counterpart, Brendan, was like, hey, you better call Felder out if you win that fight against Miller. You better call him out. So, as soon as he knocked out Jim, I was like, this guy's going to call me out, man. And I asked him, and in my ear, they're like, ask him who he wants next. And I'm like, I know who he wants next. He's going to say, I want a ranked opponent, and you're standing right here. I thought it was, uh, <laughs> he went for it, man. And unfortunately for him, I had already known about this James Vick fight was in the works, and we were negotiating and trying to get James to agree to fight down and fight me. So I felt terrible that I'm like, yeah, we'll I'll see what Sean says. That's when your acting, that's when your acting experience came yeah, in, and you're like, yeah, maybe, maybe it'll happen. Yeah, I knew, I knew <laughs> that I was trying to fight James, and, and so I felt, and I, and I talked to um, Dan Hooker in the in the bar afterwards at AC. I was like, hey man. I'm, I think I'm fighting James Vick. I'm sorry. I would absolutely love to fight with you. I think, I think he's an exciting dude. I like his style a lot. I have nothing but respect for Hooker, but I knew it was like, that's probably not going to happen, buddy. That's why I'm holding the mic. I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> So we, basically, what you're saying, the, the, the lesson here is that Brendan needs to calm down on his matchmaking. Yeah, he needs to stop telling everybody to call me out, man. Because listen, it's going to be a long time for me still fighting where I'm still doing commentary, too. And there's a lot of lightweights out there. And every single dude that I call their fight, calls me out, I'm going to be like, look, oh, just get in line. The next guy is going to call me out, too. You know? so, especially if I can stay up in the rankings. Obviously, guys, are, we're always hunting to fight above us, right? So if I can stay within the top 10, top 15, I'm going to be getting here. I think that's not the last time I'll get called out. Let's put it that way. Do you think your analyst work has helped you as a fighter at all? Yeah, I get asked that a lot, too. Um, and I think it... I think it does. It doesn't hurt, that's for sure. But I think it makes me, um, I get to see a lot of stuff. I get to see how everybody fights. I get to see, I go home and I'm breaking down tape. I'm picking keys to victory for the UFC, highlight stuff. So I think I've gotten a lot better at analyzing and breaking down moments in fights, which only helps you when you're going to build your own brand and your own skill set. You see something that, oh, Yoel does this really well. And, you know, Anthony Pettis, I know I see him do this when I watch him fight. So yeah, this helps you kind of diversify yourself. Has it made you respect even more what the announcing crew does. Obviously, you see people like Joe Rogan get flack a lot or being biased, things like that. Does it make you realize as a fighter, like, hey, they're just trying to do a job here just like anyone else? They're just watching something and talking about it. And sometimes it's not going to be what you want to hear and it might not always be perfect. There's sometimes 12 fights in a night. It's a long night to be sitting and watching one thing over and over again and talking about it and still making it interesting for the audience. You know, people don't realize this is not an easy thing and it's exhausting to do. Um, so yeah, when I watch commentary now or e even other organizations or smaller shows, I'm like, yep, it's not easy, man. So, how do you finish the fight with James Vick? By winning. That's it. I'm not a big prediction guy. Um, obviously, I'll be looking for the knockout to the finish. Uh, but uh, as far as how it's going to go down, I'll, I'll find out just like everybody else finds out on July 14th. Well, best of luck to you, Paul. Thank you.